atheist him. Can you have an atheist hymn? Surely the whole point is... Well, obviously, yeah. hy hymns are just kind of, you know, supposed to be sort of just musical devotion, really, aren't they? They're just basically kind of like, sort of... Uh, uh, I mean, hymns were pretty much invented purely to stop people getting bored in church, with just one bloke basically <laughs> exactly. saying, Oh, you're rubbish, yes, you're going uh, to hell. And here's some stuff here's in that from the Bible. Yes, do as you're told, you know. blah, blah, blah. They sort of they try to liven it up a bit, really, sort of, you know, everybody can have a bit of a sing-along, and that's really the only reason they exist. Okay. So, you can probably have... And you could. Jesus, you're so awesome. Jesus, you're awesome. We're, yeah. all completely We're all rubbish. Yeah. Really sorry about the crap news. Yes, please don't squash us. <laughs> We're lovely. Um, so, yes, you. I mean, you. It's just like, sort of, well, can you have an atheist song? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Um, you know, the song is there to basically be some form of entertainment, really, but. Um, can you have an atheist devotional? No, not really, you can't, unless you're sitting there singing about the, the brilliance of kind of like something that doesn't exist. Um, but the whole point of it is not to kind of sort of give atheists a, a kind of like a devotional song to, because they don't have them. Uh, I mean, there's a Steve Martin song called Atheists Don't Have No Songs. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's, and, you know, that's not the point of it. I think the point is that basically we wanted to have a go at one particularly annoying theistic argument, which is, well, it's just a religion. Yeah. It's a faith like anything else. No, it's not, okay? You, the absence of belief in something does not equate to the belief in something. You know, not believing in something does not mean you believe in the absence of something and so on. So it was more kind of just us having a go at kind of like everybody sort of saying, ha ha, you're as stupid as us. <laughs> yeah. Well, there is, there is, I think there is, in kind of, in internet atheist shouting, there is definitely an element of... There's a, there's a belief system where it is actually a belief in nothing. Well, the, that's more nihilism, though, isn't it, really? I mean, sort of, some atheists are nihilists, but basically atheism doesn't equate to nihilism. Well, nihilism isn't nihilism kind of self-hatred. It's, well, it's, that's the central kind of, I mean, it's, well... I mean, you, you can go, you Crossing can believe, over with nihilism and solipsism, that basically... You, you, can, you can believe it, you can believe, you can actively believe that there is nothing whilst not believing that that makes you crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nihilism is basically kind of like, oh, I'm rubbish, I'm just sort of like yeah, that. There's no, there's I just, no I just point sit in here me. and write poetry about poetry. I think they're, they're entirely different things, and the, the idea of believe, actively believing in the non existence of a god is anti theism rather than atheism. That's, um, that's more kind of positively claiming that there isn't really a god. I think you're, you're heading into that territory of basically kind of like, no, there isn't, rather than I don't believe there isn't. Um, but the point of the song was merely to just have a go at this notion that it, it's, it's, it's usually quite a feeble argument and it does boil down to the kind of like, oh, you're just as stupid as us, see. Yeah, you know, you, kind of, your you, God is science. Yeah, your God is science. Yeah. Like, well, no, it's not. Um, it's kind of like, you know, you might want to look up the definition of atheism, basically, lack or absence of a belief in a God or God. And we just wanted to do a silly kind of, sort of like, well, here's how stupid it would sound. <laughs> If it was a faith, if it was a religion, having people gathering together in this big churchy building and singing about how awesome the complete Stuff absence is. of a supernatural deity is. So we're just kind of sort of saying, yeah, we, we worship Richard Dawkins and sort of, you know, we love science and kind of like, you know, you know, we have all these sort of, uh, you know, sort of here's our laws and, you know, our laws is Darwin and kind of like sort of that. that's our, that's our sacred law. Yeah. And it's just kind of all of these ridiculous kind of things. Yes. Anybody who says this is an unbeliever and an infidel and we should... Stab them. Yeah. Get all stabby. Very yeah. stabby. Yeah. <laughs> but it was... Stabby. I just wanted to kind of go on this sort of like checklist of um, kind of like sort of, you know why it's not and it's just citing it, it is almost kind of like a list of reasons why it isn't um it's kind of like you know there's there's no central text there's no central character there's no supernatural belief 
there's no notions of the profane or sacred, there's no rites and rituals, you know, individuals may have their own rites and rituals or notions of the profane and sacred, but atheism doesn't make any of these claims at all. There isn't, you know, kind of like, you know, there will be some people within kind of the atheist community who utterly despise Richard Dawkins, and, you know, that's perfectly understandable and that's fair enough, he can be a bit of a dick sometimes, but in fairness, Christopher Hitchens could be a bigger dick. The difference yeah. is that Christopher Hitchens was a lot funnier and a <laughs> hell of a lot better in debate. Um, some people, you know, some people really like Richard Dawkins, that's fine, but the thing is he's just an evolutionary biologist, he just happens to be kind of like this one sort of figure that people, yes. or just one name in, yes. in the country. Without naming any names, getting Richard Dawkins to check your science homework does not make you right. No. Just checking. Yeah. Um, Please do remember that, throw kids. that in. Yes. Yeah, science does not basically appeal to authority, and just because Dawkins says something is right, it yes, doesn't mean it necessarily is. is. He, ne he needs to prove it. Yeah. Basically, that's the whole point of science, yes. is that you have to prove your but shit. But it's interesting where you kind of talk about the atheist community. Yes. So if it's, if it's not a thing, how can it have a community? Communities can be built up around anything, really. Uh, whether it's an ideology or a lack of an ideology, you can build up a community. I mean, that's... Perhaps the one thing that kind of why people um, have felt the need to create the Sunday Assembly, which I find a little bit silly, yeah. just the idea of basically atheists gathering together on a Sunday and basically doing music and songs and, and sort of, you know, kind of like doing little lectures on science and things like that, <laughs> kind, of, kind of playing into the theistic hands about the arguments against it being a religion. But at the same time, the one thing that church does, um, and has always done religion in general, is basically create a community, create a group, and, you know, they'll be built around some particular idea or, or, or you know, thing that they like. I mean, church is essentially just a bloody hobby. Yeah. Institutionalised hobby. Um, just a whole bunch of people getting together. And it, the one thing that people, I, th I think, they say they miss when they kind of abandon religion is the lack of community. There, yeah. isn't, there isn't something they necessarily do every week and go and hang out with like-minded people. So I can completely agree with the notion of the Sunday Assembly and things like that being like that. You know, you do want to hang out with people who kind of get you and who often think the same ways, even though you should always have people challenging your ideas and you should hear dissenting opinions. So I can understand that, but basically it's probably a bad idea to refer to it as an atheist church. You're just kind of using that language and sort yeah. of playing into their hands, and it makes it a hell of a lot harder for us to do a stupid song yeah. saying kind of like, here's, here's the you know, 15 reasons why atheism is not a religion, and then you're basically kind of sort of saying, well, we're basically getting together in this building and singing and sort of like doing stuff about science. It's kind of like, well, we've just cited that as reasons why it's not a bloody religion. <laughs> yeah, I just kind of, when you said that, I just thought, yes, getting getting together on Sunday and talking about geeky, sciencey things and then singing songs. Yeah, and, uh, and you just realise that that's what we, we do, do on a Sunday afternoon. On a Sunday. And there's tea and biscuits as opposed, to wine, and, my as opposed to wine and Jesus crackers. Yeah, well, occasionally there's wine. <laughs> occasionally there's wine, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was just kind of like, sort of like, look, I'm fed up of this argument, it's stupid, yeah. and here's why. Yeah. Um, and it was just fun to kind of parody, and it, it's fun to kind of parody that notion, and obviously sort of heavily influenced by Monty Python um, I do particularly remember when my um, little sister was christened, she's about 20 years younger than me, um, and myself and uh, my sister Tam um, and a few of us, sort of like the sort of basically the sort of the slightly kind of irreverent members <laughs> of the family were in this church in Bracknell somewhere. Um, at the back and you know got the older family members down the front and all very proud oh she's being christened and stuff like yes. that which my mum really only did obviously to placate the older members yes. of the family anyway because my mum's pretty much kind of like you know if basically God doesn't do the washing up or put food yeah, on the really, table yeah. what's the bloody point of him yeah. you know it's kind of like apathyistic is probably the best description we don't know we don't care um, yeah. but we were there kind of like Sort of, you know, oh, sort of, yeah, wandering at which point, you know, all of us burst into flames from wandering into a church. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, the organ strikes up and they're doing all things bright and beautiful. And obviously, as Monty Python fans, we're there singing all things dull and ugly and just pissing <laughs> ourselves laughing. So, <laughs> that was an obvious influence on the, um, the fact that this probably had to be done in kind of proper church organ yeah. style and just done as this, like, as though you're amongst the congregation of all these people singing earnestly about how, the, how they love science and yeah. drying cocks and all of this. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, being, I mean, that was that bit being was really very silly. Fun. Yeah, I mean, it was, was it was stupidly fun to do. Yeah, and it was kind of awful in the way that group church singing by non-professional singing was. It was yeah, that was just hilarious. Well, yeah, I mean, sort of the for us, yeah, for us, was. for us. As, so it was sort of a bit of a challenge to try and sort of recreate the sound of a of a hundred people sort of random people singing but we came up with the idea that kind of like well everybody in a church it's it's just this very disparate group of people who all sing in completely different ways and most people can't sing yeah so when they're in church <laughs> so all those are people singing along in stupid different ways and we just thought so like, well what we'll do is we'll like we'll do like a list of characters basically we'll have members of the congregation we'll actually give them like you know, like almost like a name and a character yeah. and that kind of defines the way they sing so we'll have you know kind of i think we had like what was it mr and mrs gregarious yeah and they'd be kind of like so i think it was brian gregarious it's like oh he's going to be like brian blessed he's like yeah. we're bird. he's really kind yeah. of big and and bold and then you'd have kind of like um you were uh, felicity reticent <laughs> reticent the kind of like <laughs> so like the little the little girl yeah. who's basically get, I'm yeah I'm getting all the words is. wrong yeah. and in the wrong order and then you'd have like i think there's like kevin reson who's like <laughs> sort of harry enfield's kevin the teenager and when you kind of put all these completely stupid different character voices together I mean there was only 12 voices I think in total uh, split between us and when you put them all together they sound really scarily church like yeah. <laughs> it's like, like you really are surrounded by these people and we were just very kind of pleased about how it sounded for just such a stupid yeah, tiny little space yeah because really done like that was our second one, wasn't that it? That was our second one. It's like we're sort of like we're not really sort of practiced at yeah. singing or <laughs> <laughs> especially the anything. singing. Especially the singing. I still suck. Um, well, but I it's just kind of since like, I was thirteen. <laughs> well, fair so. enough. <laughs> but it's just kind of like you, you always find. Like, here's a microphone. Off yeah. You go. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> The thing is, it works. It's like you yeah. do stupid voices, and it does sound like this this bizarre little congregation of people. Um, so that it was a lot of fun to do, and it was it was fun to kind of know that you were basically sort of doing something very silly and just saying, "Here's what it would sound like if atheists had a church," yeah. and how stupid it would be if you actually sat and thought about it. You know, sort of like, well, we get up on Sundays and we watch Carl Sagan's Cosmos because that's one of our rituals, and yeah. then we, we have a you know a, a sacramental sort of you know apple pie, and <laughs> um, you know sort of like rather than the the, the traditional sacraments of kind of like wine and and sort of unleavened crackers crackers <laughs> sound stupid it's like well, they kind of are they, they are crackers dude basically it's just like well it'd be nice but there's like some cheese on it and like <laughs> spring onions and a bit of salt and pepper it'd be lovely um rather than that we have the kind of sort of you know um christopher hitchens obviously always famously never really seen without a glass of johnny walker black label in his hand so obviously we've got to you know, have that have his glass of whiskey. Yeah, obviously, you know, <laughs> drop it in one hand. You got a fag in the other hand, which would have been, really would have been difficult. But yeah, you've obviously got that sort of like if you're going to sort of an atheist sort of you know sort of sacramental wine is basically going to be that Hitchens kind of glass of whiskey. Yeah. You know, we're going to be sort of take our, our moral cues from the God delusion rather than the Bible. And it's just like when you add up all these things together, you realise how stupid the idea that it could possibly be a religion sounds. It's kind of like there's respect, you know, sort of so many people. Sort of like you know, there'll be some people who like a glass of whiskey. There will be some people who hate Dawkins. There will be some people who think Brian Cox is an annoying tit. <laughs> he can be. Yeah. He's quite sweet though, but he can be an annoying tit. <laughs> the fact yes. that he's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And he's, he's yeah. Being a particle physicist doesn't qualify you to then talk about anything else you feel like talking about if you put the phrase the wonders of at the front of it yeah. especially if you've claimed that oh yeah are, are the branches of science there are real well, science yeah. it's all physics is the only science because oh, now the bbc has given me loads of money to do anthropology yes. then maybe i'll think I anthropology think is a science i, I, well. I, I do wonder how point much at some aboriginals yeah. or look Oh look down at the ground. I thought it was Robin Ince who quite sort of fairly pointed out that when he was doing the wonders of life that it's going to be the first time Bright never points down at stuff rather than up. <laughs> look, um, there's the it's like, oh, oh look, there's some, there's like some life beneath my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not physics. <laughs> I'm gonna squash it. <laughs> well, that's 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 kind of religion. 
Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not physics. We 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 declare this iguana to be inf infidel. Yeah. <laughs> I do wonder how much of that is, is kind of persona, really, because it does become something in, in Infinite Monkey Cage, where it's a case of, you know, sort of like, sort of, you know, the whole thing about Brian spends all of his time standing in a field pointing up at stuff, saying everything's amazing, <laughs> uh, and basically dismissing every other branch of, of inquiry apart from physics. <laughs> well, haven't they switched off the Large Hadron Collider at the moment because they're making it into an even bigger Hadron Collider or something? Are they, are they making it bigger? Yeah, I think they're making it faster or something, so it's probably not got a lot to do. All right. Well, no, you can visit it. You can actually go around it. And you can go around it for free, apparently. Cool! Yeah, it, is, it is actually open to the public. You, I think you just have to kind of let them know you're coming. Yeah, I don't think they're doing any colliding there at the moment. No. <laughs> no, I don't think they are. They've got bikes, haven't they? They go around it on bikes because well, it's, it's so big. It's because it's miles. It's yeah. huge. It crosses the border of two countries. It's do you reckon ever the physicists go around in the opposite direction on bikes and do like and bicycle to colliding? Do the what, like jousting? <laughs> yeah. I was going to say just cycle around and get up as much speed as yeah. possible. <laughs> and just have the world's <laughs> longest run up to a joust. That's kind of what we're going to do, kind of like physicist bike colliding. <laughs> they hit each other. They go, have I found the Higgs boson? I don't it's know, like, I no. can see stars. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, but have you found your fingers? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just lost them in the collision. <laughs> I like Bill Bailey's suggestion that they should like put Maltesers in it. <laughs> just, just send the yeah, thing hurtling around at just sub sub, sub light yeah, basically, speeds. Basically, why would you not want to put other things in it other than the thing? Isn't that what you do with everything? <laughs> well, yeah, you're always going to abuse it somehow. Yeah, I don't know of anything that I've ever had that is possible that is capable of shooting things out in any kind of direction. <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't put something else in to see if it will shoot that. Right. <laughs> Was that a deliberate euphemism? <laughs> no! No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we don't. We don't need. Yeah, saying, we yeah. don't need to label this video as adult content. No, then. no, no, no. But I was kind of thinking, sort of putting pencils in Nerf guns and stuff like oh, that. Oh right, okay, yeah. Well, everybody did that. Yeah. So wouldn't you? Yeah, all you generally discovered was that kind of pencils fired into people's eyes hurt. Well, also, pencils are a lot heavier than Nerf darts, and so they tend to just kind of come flying out the end and then. Not aerodynamically designed, the pencil, no. really. What happens if you put a pencil in the crossbow? Well, you've got a crossbow, I know. so we could find that's what out. I'm wondering, yeah. It will probably not actually go through your shed door, it will probably just obliterate. That'd be quite good fun. Yeah. yeah okay, we might, we might have yeah, to do yeah, that the then. Science video. Yeah, the science video. Science experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Other things you could put in a crossbow that aren't crossbow bolts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, if the Sunday Assembly would actually like to use our song, uh, yeah, go, you for know, it. go for it. We don't mind. Yeah, um, that'd be hilarious. Also, yeah, that would be but, funny. Send us videos. Yeah, yeah, really, really. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, basically, yeah. one of the comments that we got when we first put that out was somebody commenting, "Oh, yeah, you're so stupid because atheists don't do that." We know. We that's know. That's the, the whole point. Joke. Yeah, I, I did feel a little bad having to actually explain it to someone who. Um, <laughs> had commented basically kind of like sort of we don't all like worship Richard Dawkins it's kind of like oh god um <laughs> it's like I didn't want to have to explain it to someone it's like you know I like to assume that basically if one has abandoned some of these sort of supernatural beliefs one tends to think more rationally and sort of tends to approach things with a little bit more kind of you know sort of intelligence uh, but obviously that's not always the case and somebody will basically go we don't all worship Richard Dawkins you know it's kind of like I know yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the point. But that, that actually is a good point. I mean, has, does, has anybody, has everybody who says they're an atheist actually abandoned supernatural beliefs? Because we all believe in weird, crazy shit, really. Um, well, if you're an atheist, the only belief you've definitely abandoned for a fact is the belief in that... That's an email, that's right. That's, that's an email. Oh, that's yeah. all right then. That's probably snow mail. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, um, everybody's no, still got a bow, they're all going to die. So. If, if you're an atheist, then you have really only... It, it, it's a, it only deals with one thing, and that yeah. is God belief. You have a... Basically, atheist is without gods. So, basically, you lack a belief in gods. That doesn't mean, however, you can't believe in loads of other stupid shit. I mean, there are... There are, weirdly... I, I don't come across them very often. There are atheists in some areas of the internet who believe in astrology. And it's kind of like, well... <sighs> <laughs> it's kind of like well done for basically being <laughs> rational about the kind of you know the, the whole god, god thing. I, for the most part, I tend not to encounter them very often, and I do spend a lot of time 
probably an inordinate amount of time generally on Twitter encountering all sorts of people and very rarely have I ever spoken to an atheist who has some other supernatural beliefs. I don't, I don't come across them. You're more likely to find them, um, I think, you get the, so the, the slightly, so with the new age tinge. Yeah. Um, you get the, I mean, and they're generally the people who kind of like, no, I sort of, you know, I, I do believe in things like, you know, homeopathy, and it's kind of like, well, yeah. again... Yeah, that's silly. That's silly, you know, you need I mean, to... that's you know, provably silly. That is provably silly, you know, it's... <laughs> because it's just water. Exactly, I mean, you can prove homeopathy is bullshit with basically a six-year-old, a glass, and a bottle of Kiora, and just, yeah. you know, sort of say, go on, put, keep putting more water in the yeah. squash, it'll make it more orangey, and they'll tell you it's bollocks. Yeah. Um, no, I was going to say... You tend to get some some who people who declare themselves kind of you know I don't believe in God I'm an atheist but basically I am spiritual. Oh and yeah. It's kind of like well what exactly do you mean by yeah. that? It's kind of like sort of you know sort of well I've got a dream catcher above my bed. It's kind of like I'm gonna fucking slap you. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop. It's kind of like. Um, <laughs> Actually, I'm, I think probably kind of especially down in this part of the country, especially Cornwall. I yes. Know, kind of Totnes, just out the road from us, which is the place where you live. If you can't afford to live in Glastonbury. Yes, it's um, baby Glastonbury. Yeah, there's lots of there is definitely lots of I'm spirit. Yeah, I, I'm spiritual. Yeah. And it's spelled C H A L at the end. Spiritual. Yeah. Spiritual. Yes. Yeah. And well, wasn't yeah, it, it's, which does mean I've got a dream catcher above my bed. Yes. Was it our, was it our friend Steve at work who referred to Totnes as yogurt knitting territory? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And he's dead right, it really is. Um, <laughs> sorry, Totnes, but grow up. Um, oh, you got yours coming. Oh, yeah. Yeah, don't worry. There's a, there's a prog rock epic with your name on it. Um, <laughs> it just takes a long time to do prog it, it, we'll, rock. We'll get there, yeah. eventually. Um, no, it, it, you do get that kind of new age thing. And it's like... It's like, you, it's like you want people to explain what they mean by spiritual and they never really do. And I think a lot of them basically kind of, they just want to get away from the label of religious because they feel it's, it's got too many bad connotations yeah. and it just basically says too much negative about you. And that's fair enough. But the thing is, in order to get away from that, you have to actually be not religious. And the <laughs> things about religion that often basically make sort of people look at you as if to sort of say, you know, well, that's a bad thing. It's kind of like you're believing in stuff without evidence. And it's kind of like, well, if you're going to sort of, you know, have dream catchers and, and take homeopathic medicine, then you might really want to kind of ask yourself exactly, you know, what good is being spiritual to you? It's kind of like, well, it's kind of like, I don't believe in this stupid shit over here, yeah, but, but I do believe, believe in this stupid, stupid shit, shit over there. It's kind of like, well, you just basically want... It, it's that kind of slightly hippie-ish thing yeah. of... Um, of kind of like wanting to abandon some stuff but haven't yet realised that the other stuff is also just as silly. See, I officially don't believe in astrology. Good. But, <laughs> but uh -oh. the time of year that you're born does influence how your life is going to be. Yes, it does, but this is this is environmental though, yeah. isn't it? This but, is... also, but actually, kind of, if you look at it, the, the looking at the stars is a way of measuring time. Yeah, well, it's how it, how it was measured. Yeah. So I kind of think there can be parallels there. It's like I definitely think like, uh, what's it called? Where you stick needles in people, not heroin acupuncture. addiction. Yeah, her acupuncture. Yeah. Um, it has been proven to work. In How limited, in limited, limited yeah, ways. Yeah, as far as kind of pain management and things like that go. Kind of. Yeah, but for the but for the, the most part, it's twaddle. <laughs> well, I think the reason why it's said to work is twaddle. In right. the kind of it makes your chi move around. Yes, well that is complete twaddle. But it doesn't. But if we say that, uh, if we say that the internet has pixies in it, yeah. you run around and carry all your information. That yes. doesn't make the internet twaddle, and it doesn't yeah. actually make the fact that packets of information are being moved around the internet twaddles. But it's just the way that. We no, there it. is. There is. There are some. I believe there are some measurable effects from sticking needles into various parts of your body. And they can be either positive or negative. Especially in the case of heroin addiction. Yeah, especially in the case of heroin <laughs> addiction. But that's probably less to do with the needle itself. Yeah. That's just more the delivery. Um, but it's it's one of those things, isn't it? It's kind of like, well, 
focus on what's provably true. Focus on what you can actually say is positive about it. I mean, there will be some people who, who I know people who go to chiropractors yeah. and um, not wanting to get into a Simon Singh situation where I get sued by the British <laughs> Chiropractors Association for saying it's bollocks. But for the most part, it's bollocks, or at least a lot of the claims they make are bollocks. There is, you know, I mean, basically the, the word you really want to go for is osteopathy. Yeah. Um, there, there is something to be said from basically, you know, sort of, you know, issues to do with the spine and things like that. But obviously the claims sort of saying, oh, come to a chiropractor and we can cure your child of their asthma. It's like, that's horseshit. Yeah, that's not going to work. That's absolute horseshit. And it's, you need to take each claim on its merits. And basically if a claim is bollocks, it's bollocks. If one claim from a particular group is bollocks, it doesn't mean all of their claims are bollocks, but obviously when all of their claims are bollocks, all of their claims are bollocks. It's kind of like you can just sort of say, no, it's bollocks. Basically, homeopathy, it's bollocks. It's definitely bollocks. Essentially, you yeah. know, kind of like I mean, the three basic claims that kind of like, well, like cures like, well, no, that's clearly bollocks because yeah. obviously the homeopathic sleep remedy is caffeine, which is that famous relaxant that yes. we've all heard of. I mean, I like nothing better than to drink an entire pot full of black coffee before going to sleep and having a very restful night. Um, it, you know, it's kind of like, all oh, the more you dilute something, the more powerful it gets. Yeah, that doesn't work. Clearly bollocks. Like, we'd be drinking pee. Absolutely. All the time. Well, that and or, the fact that you, nuclear waste. You, well, the fact you drink a single glass of water, basically, you'll be filled with you know the the vitality of absolutely everything that's ever been in that water. And then you've got the claim that kind of like, well, no, water has memory. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Yeah, <laughs> no, it doesn't. And various little bits. So stuff. you know you can write off all of homeopathy because all of its claims are bollocks. Whereas you can look at something like acupuncture and sort of say, okay, there is this one thing here that's probably fair, but the rest of it over here is a bit, a bit iffy. <laughs> um, and as you say with astrology it's kind of like there is something to be said from the time of year you're born but again that's, that's demonstrably to do with things like the environment if you're a, yeah. like a child basically growing up in winter your environment is going to have a direct impact on your yeah. development um, whereas basically being born on a very particular day and the position of some star several thousand light years away <laughs> doesn't basically dictate your entire personality for the rest of your life and if you think that it does you need a slap <laughs> because otherwise that means basically so you're flexible on this I'm issue I'm flexible on this issue of astrology because <laughs> it basically means that there's 12 personality types and that's that's clearly nonsense yeah but well th but yeah then you've got them mixed up so you could be like you know like kind of on cancer within Li Aries Libra, rising. yeah Libra rising yeah away, yeah. yeah well you would say that because what are you <laughs> Capricorn yeah you see but then Capricorn's again, it's like, famously sceptical obviously <laughs> yes <laughs> Very obvious astrology joke, well done. Yes, thank you, I, was, I had to hug it in. I was wondering when you were going to crowbar that in. <laughs> yeah, we would say that over a Capricorn. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> but then it does give you a way of thinking about personality archetypes, which is kind of a useful it thing. It does, but the thing is it's also kind of insulting to to kind of human intelligence really because it, it obviously tries to boil things down to such simple simple things and as we know everything about human beings is never black and white it's not yeah. binary there's nothing about the human experience that's ever really truly black and white in terms of because of the scope of what's available from such complex molecular machines i mean sort of like you know something as complex as the human brain is not going to throw up something so laughably simple as kind of like you know it's sort of like sort of you're either this type of person or you're that type of person. It's kind of like it just doesn't happen. You know, sexuality, gender, it's all it's all a spectrum. You've got the autism spectrum and so on, and it's just everything sort of falls into this different array of things simply because of the complexity of it. So you're never gonna get these kind of like key personality types but you know, it's sort of so simply kind of expressed because it it's just not like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, you, could, you could you could probably group. Yeah, you could probably group I things. I think that's what it does. I think it, it, yeah, it gives you groups to put things into, and then actually kind of it gives you parameters to think. Yeah, about. and then you can I subdivide think. further. But I think that yeah. the fact that you it's you know you, it's you can then subdivide even further, and those subgroups will subdivide even further, and basically you you know you're going to keep going and going and going. It's, it's like going to be like the 
bloody Higgs boson, really, isn't it? It's kind yeah. of like sort of like the atom is the smallest thing there is, except oh, for all we'll the smash it. Smash oh, it. oh, there's loads yeah. of things in it. Oh, okay, we'll smash all of the. Oh, there's loads of things in them as well. Damn yeah. it! It's like okay, we'll get down to the, the there's twelve particles of matter. It's kind of like actually yeah, we're not sure about that one. We might be able to smash a few more, and there might be things <laughs> inside those. It's kind of like yeah, how far down does it go? And right. I'm not entirely convinced that we're not just smashing things into bits <laughs> and then kind of dis and then naming the bits. Well, why not? You might as well give them names. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure if the bits are actually fundamental particles or they're just broken bits of thing. <laughs> it's like uh, there, there's a there's a one of the Terry Pratchett science of Discworld books right. that I was reading recently, where they go into the kind of is those ones are really easy to well the the if you top tier if you want to read the brief history of time, yes. read the first science of Discworld book first because it kind of gets all that stuff into your head but in a silly way so then kind of the brief history kind of, yeah. stuff that blows your mind doesn't kind of It works quite well as a primer. Much. Yeah. It was a um, species that only hears sound. Doesn't, yeah. doesn't touch anything, doesn't... It can't feel touch, it can't touch objects, it can't see. The only thing it has is sound. Right. And it hears the sound of a piano. Yeah. And it's trying to work out what it is that's making this sound, and so it tries to measure the piano, and then it creates. So it says, "Okay, well, there are waves coming off this thing. This thing is made of waves, and it basically kind of goes around, and it ends up smashing the piano to actually try and find out what the essence of a piano is. Right. And creates the twang on particle. Which <laughs> Twangons. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, or plonkons. So, yeah, we've found we've made out of plonkons and twangons. And yeah, so kind of, yeah, basically, it's, are we doing that? Are we smashing up a piano in order to find the essence of piano And then um, going, here's a tiny piece of wood with a wheel attached to it. Is that. Well, I, th I think, because, well, as you said, it, it kind of like, it, so the size of this thing was obviously going to work as quite a good primer for brief yeah. history of time because it's going to be. Terry Pratchett has clearly read Brief History of Time yeah, and thought, what, what kind of stupid way yeah. can I actually kind of express this notion? And it, it does make obviously that simpler, so obviously it, it's going to make that much easier for people to, to get their head around fundamental particles, if you can imagine, well basically we're smashing up a piano to figure yeah. out what bit of it is the actual sound part. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so actually, are we doing that? Are we just smashing up bits of the universe? God, we've gone into some kind of deep subjects. It's, on this gone, it's got a bit yeah. weird now. Yeah, <laughs> but, but are we just smashing up bits of the universe and then going, look, there's bits? Yeah. Everything's made out of bits. We're going to stick a label on this bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bit too small to stick a label on it. <laughs> we just have to draw it and say we saw it. Yeah, we're going to have to. We, yeah, we can't actually see where the bit was. No, no, that's gone. We yeah. smashed it. We haven't discovered what the sandwich on is, but we know that if we eat the sandwich. <laughs> Then it, 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 ah, well, it, sandwiches it, it, are generally made up of cheese and pickle particles. <laughs> yeah. So, who is the best god? Probably Thor, but you might have a different opinion. Let us know what you think in the comments down there. Check out the Atheist Hymn, which inspired this particular discussion over there. Over there you'll find all of our other videos, or at least some of them, interspersed with various other random stuff that YouTube has put in. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, and download our songs for free from the website. Bye! Bye!